What's up, it's Rowan here from Artist Mind Education with another weekly HSC Economic Stats Update. In this episode, we're looking at labor force data. The ABS has just made a drop and we're gonna be looking at what's happening with unemployment, uh, participation rates, and more with some analysis from The Guardian. If your first time dialing in in these episodes, I unpack the key stats and headlines from around the domestic and global economy, giving you the key analysis you need in minutes to unlock that band six in the HSC Economics course. So let's look at the data for today. Now, as we can see here, this is the September period of data as a reference period, and unemployment has remained unchanged at 4.1%. So for those of you seeing the HSC economics exams coming up, uh, good news, you don't have to remember any new unemployment stats. Now, note, in saying that, what we should be aware of is that some of the data has changed, and I'm focusing on the trends terms here. Participation rate has increased to a record high of 67.2%. So remember, participation rate refers to uh, the labor force over the working age population. So the way it can increase is ultimately that you have more people either actively seeking work, so i.e. unemployed, or being employed in jobs. So it's the unemployed plus the employed. So what we're seeing here is uh, record levels of people either in jobs or actively seeking work. Now that's often interesting because usually when you've got economic downturns or periods with slower growth, uh, people tend to not seek work as much because they don't think that there's many opportunities available. It'll be hard to get work so they don't bother. On the flip side, in a cost of living crisis where you know uh, clearly inflationary pressures are making it harder for families to pay the bills, you could also see that that could be driving more people to have to go out and find work uh, to be able to pay their bills, right? Which could at some level drive participation. It should be noted though that you can also utilize this when analyzing effectiveness of government policy, particularly fiscal policy, because over recent budgets, there have been big focuses on uh, participation, particularly raising uh, the participation often of women in the labor force. And you can see that as well with uh, childcare subsidies that have been implemented over the last couple of budgets. Uh, which are designed ultimately in many cases to encourage parents, not just women, but parents to return to work after having uh, you know, a, a child. Although often that tends to be really uh, you know, encouraging women to particularly be able to go back who will bear uh, you know, often, particularly in the early years, uh, you know, a lot of the child rearing responsibility. So as a result, you could utilize this participation rate as evidence to highlight that some of those policies in you know, fiscal policy is starting to bear fruit in terms of driving improved participation rates in the Australian economy. Now, what else has happened here in terms of the data? Well, uh, overall, okay, if we wanna have a quick scroll down, okay, we can see that um, this is particularly relevant if we look at the trend. You know, look, unemployed slightly ticked up, right? Slightly ticked up if we look at trend by you know, 1,100 people you know, across the Australian economy, that's almost nothing, right? Uh, it's very, very small. And in some respects, that's probably a likely result of the fact that we've seen participation rate go up. Remember, um, often in the short term, if the participation rate goes up, unemployment can sometimes increase because it depends on whether or not those people that have moved from hidden, not looking for work, to actively seeking work, uh, they become unemployed immediately, right? And so it's only if they're also able in the period that they've actively started seeking work to then find a job and they become employed that you don't see you know, um, shifts and increases in the, the total number of uh, people unemployed, but also in the unemployment rate. So we can see here the good news is that there is still uh, you know, demand uh, for labor that is actually, even though the participation rate is growing, there are new jobs that are being created and these people that are starting to actively seek work and become part of the labor force and therefore part of the participation rate are being subsumed right into the employment, the pool of the employed, which is fantastic, right? And we can sort of see some of this um, if we scroll down a little bit here, okay? So a um, couple of things, right, um, that we can sort of highlight, and we can see this here um, purely by the fact that in trend terms, right, employment increased by you know 44,000 people roughly, right? So you can see that, okay, great, like there's new jobs being created. And so even if more people are coming into that labor force, right, um, The good news is a lot of them, the majority of them are going into work, right? And only a few, as we saw 1,100 over the month of September, have not actually moved into uh, work. And that's, you know, where there's been that slight increase in the total number of unemployed, but nowhere near significant enough to actually increase the unemployment rate. Now, note um, where are those jobs and that composition of jobs going? I think this is particularly relevant and interesting. 
Um, and this is, you can see here that, you know, 29,000, uh, you know, almost 30,000 were full-time um, and part-time were 14 and up. So the positive here is that full-time roles grew uh, you know, um, more, you know, there was twice as many full-time roles that were responsible for that increase in employment. Um, what is interesting is a really great stat that I think it's worth noting is what is the, the share of employment and that part-time share of employment is 30, almost 31%. Okay. So if we look at, uh, you know, the, the levels of, uh, you know, you know the, the number of people employed right, across Australia, you could say, okay, one in three almost, 30, almost 31% are in part-time roles. Now, why is that relevant? Well, it does highlight ongoing spare capacity in the economy, okay? If you've got people in a part-time role, uh, they're not in full-time, so you would assume at some level that they have excess capacity. So at some level, there may be some levels of underemployment here where they're wanting more hours and unable to get it. And so therefore, you know, you can see that, okay, great, uh, there's, even though unemployment is still very, very low in Australia, and that's been the argument for the last couple of years, because we have an increasingly large percentage of people employed in part-time roles, there is most likely still a fair bit of spare capacity that exists in the labour market um, in terms of people in part-time roles who would like more work. Now, a couple of final little things to note here in the data that I think is relevant is youth unemployment rate has decreased to 9.5%, which is fantastic. Often there is a, a bit of a hangover, right, from recessions and uh, economic crises in youth unemployment. It remains often much more elevated for much longer, and it still certainly is, as we can see. 9.5 for youth versus 4.1 for the general population does highlight just the differences. And so that's a good stat just to highlight if you're looking at uh, you know, differences in unemployment for different groups in the economy, which is part of uh, you know, the unemployment um, syllabus, you know, part of the syllabus for the unemployment section of the course. So it is particularly good to have one or two stats for different groups in the economy, right? Um, and looking at their labor market outcomes so that you can utilize that if you were to get a short answer question in uh, your HSC exams or assessments. So really quickly, uh, you know, The Guardian has some analysis on this data as well, although we can get a lot of this data itself from the ABS. So a couple of things, I guess, to note here is that economists had predicted the rate would remain at the 4.2% initially reported for August. So the August data was revised down to 4.1. So in other words, the job market is doing a little bit better, right, at the moment than economists have expected, okay? Now, equally, you know, the Albanese government, um, you know, the Char Jim Chalmers, the treasurer, is, is claiming that since they have taken government, uh, you know, the, the economy uh, has actually, you know, um, you know, the number of extra jobs in the economy is a, is a million, right? So you could argue, again, big picture, if you're looking at effectiveness of fiscal policy, not just a singular policy, but over the last couple of years, okay, you could argue at some level, uh, you know, particularly given the fact that, uh, you know, monetary policy has been contractionary, um, trying to squeeze inflation, you could argue that this is a result of, you know, successful fiscal policies if you were to be analysing its effectiveness on the labour market. A couple of other things just to note here, and this is something that we've been sharing and I've been sharing in recent, uh, recent episodes we've been looking at the labour market, is that even though 4.1%, you know, looks good, um, there is still real weakness, okay? Uh, both the Treasury and RBA are forecasting that, you know, the jobless rate, the unemployment rate, will increase to 4.4 to 4.5 by the middle of next year. Now, that is still crazily low, okay? As you can see here, uh, the Guardian highlights, it's a figure still lower than most years since the mid-1970s. So it's still a really, really strong position, okay, uh, that we find ourselves in, despite the fact that economic growth is quite anemic and despite the fact that we're in, you know, an inflationary environment. So there we have it. Uh, that's all the data for this week on the labor market. Hopefully that helps you make sense of the data, but also gives you a couple of, I think, real nice little things that you can utilize um, in your analysis, particularly as well if you've got the HC Economics exam coming uh, next week and you're looking for a couple of little data points on evaluating effectiveness of fiscal policy.